Hello, this is Catherine from Accelerated Reader, reading books for you. Today, I will be reading the last chapter, chapter 23, from Two Very Rare Bears by S.P. Bullock and G.S. Work. Before I begin reading, I would like to give a big thanks to the authors for sending me this book to read on my channel. In the description below, I've included links where we find and purchase this book. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Chapter 23 Early Christmas morning, Pendle Farm was awoken by the sound of little James excitedly shouting, He's been! He's been! as he dragged his Christmas stocking out onto the hallway. Everyone's bedroom door flung open. It snowed. It looks magical out there, Eva squealed. Emily ran to join James, and Harry and George jumped up onto Tom's wheelchair, and everyone made their way downstairs. Look, look, Harry, said James. The mince pies and carrots have gone. Wow, said Harry. He really did come. He's left us all presents, said Emily, as the children gathered around the Christmas tree. Grandpa suddenly said, Ahem, just before you all open your gifts, we'd like to give our guests of honor their Christmas presents. Harry's little face looked up and he said, Us? You've got George and I presents? Oh, you're so kind. We, we don't know what to say. Grandma handed the bears a small red parcel each tied with a gold bow. Everyone watched as Harry and George opened their presents. Oh, oh, these are beautiful, said Harry as he and George tried on their gorgeous, hand-knitted alpaca jumpers. They fitted the bears perfectly. Thank you, you're all so kind. We really don't know what to say, said Harry. We didn't have time to get anybody anything. Don't worry, Harry, said Tom. Having you and George here is the best present ever. Right, said Grandma. Let's see what Santa has brought you children. And with that, the children opened all their gifts. James squealed with delight as he unwrapped a new sledge. Eva and Emily got new horse riding hats. And Tom got a whole new set of adventure books. Auntie Maggie was dancing around in her new alpaca bed socks and scarf that Grandma had made, and the children gave their grandparents some handmade pottery gifts. Everyone was in great spirits, especially when Emily put on Sam Scottford's Christmas Mega Mix, and they started dancing. Harry was laughing at the first trot rocking around the Christmas tree, and changed the word singing. George fell out of the Christmas tree. All the family began to laugh. Even Queenie and Pimpin joined in, playing with the discarded Christmas wrapping paper. Tom suddenly said, Everybody, everybody, I would just like to say a massive thank you to Auntie Maggie for the best Christmas present ever. Why, thank you, Tom, said Maggie. I can't think of a better home for Queenie and Pimpin. No, no, we love the cats, but I mean the Churchill's Christmas hamper, said Tom, for if you had never sent it, whatever would have happened to Harry and George, our two very rare bears and everyone broke into applause. Now, in a story like this, 
it would usually be the end. But in Harry and George's case, it was only just the beginning. For in Shanghai, China, five and a half thousand miles away, Ling Wei, who'd sewn the rose quartz crystals into Harry and George's chests, had also been celebrating Christmas with her mother, father, and husband. It was early evening in China, and Ling Wei's father and husband were snoozing in their chairs. Ling Wei and her mother were taking green tea, and as her mother passed her a warm cup, she noticed her daughter wasn't wearing the bracelet she had given her. Why? You're not wearing your lucky bracelet, Wei. Why ever not? I forgot to tell you, mother, she replied. It broke a few months ago, and it fell on the floor. I felt very sad, as I felt it was a bad sign. But I picked up all of the stones so I could fix the bracelet. I keep them in a silk pouch on my dressing table. Go get them. I'll repair it for you, said her mother. So Ling Wei got up and went into her bedroom to get her silk pouch. But as she opened her bedroom door, to her surprise, the room was illuminated by a warm pink glow. Where was it coming from? she thought. Confused, she walked towards the dressing table where her little silk pouch was glowing pink. How can this be? she said to herself. Carefully, she picked up her silk pouch and gently tipped the stones into the palm of her left hand. Her heart began to race as the light became brighter. She clasped the stones, and a warm, calming energy flowed through her body. Instinctively, she closed her eyes, and a vision came before her of four children, laughing and smiling as they were dancing around a large Christmas tree, except for one boy who was in a wheelchair with two small doggy bears on his lap. It was Harry and George. They were together. The boy was hugging and talking to them, and they were moving, and then they began to dance. Ling Wei couldn't believe what she was seeing. Their little chests were glowing, radiating warm light, just like her own rose crystals. She opened her eyes and looked down at her left hand, still clasping the stones, and slowly opened her fingers. The stones were so glowing. Tears began to roll down Ling Wei's cheeks, but they were not tears of sadness. This time, they were tears of joy, because in a strange sort of way, the children she had longed for were alive in the form of two Churchill's doggy bears. Somehow, the rose quartz she had sewn into the bear's chests had given them life. Her mother was right all along. The stones did have power. Meanwhile, half a world away, back at Pendle Farm, sure enough, the children were dancing around the Christmas tree with Harry and George, when their little chests began to glow pink. Look at Harry and George, cried James. They look like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. All the children turned to look at Harry and George. They couldn't believe what they were seeing. You're glowing, said Eva to Harry and George. How are you doing that, said Emily. Harry? George? What's happening? said Tom. I, I, I don't know, said Harry. George was talking excitedly in Chinese and instinctively took Harry's paw. Their chests 
glowed brighter, and whilst the children stood watching, open mouthed, the bears closed their eyes, and just like Ling Wei, a vision appeared. They could see a beautiful Chinese lady holding in her left hand the same glowing light that was emitting from their chests. They felt an overwhelming love for her, and both of them instinctively knew that she was their mother. We have a mother, cried Harry. Take our paws and form a circle. You can see her too. The children quickly did as Harry instructed, and all joined hands in a circle. As they all closed their eyes, they too could see Ling Wei, and in her left hand, the glowing stones. I don't understand, said Tom. That doesn't look like England. It's not England, said Harry. It's China. Don't ask me how, but I know it is. George started talking in Mandarin. Of course, said Tom. You're from China. But then... As quickly as the vision appeared, it faded away. They all stood in silence until Harry turned to George and said, We've got to get to China. We've got to find our mother. Harry and George looked at Tom, who smiled and said, I guess that means we're all going on another adventure. Not the end. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to like and subscribe. In the description below, I've included links where you may find and purchase this book.